All right, ready? Yep. Action. In this video, we're going to compare the Canon Auto Zoom 1014 and 814 Super 8 cameras. If you're not already familiar, these were two early 70s Canon Super 8 cameras. The full names are the Auto Zoom 814 electronic and the Auto Zoom 1014 electronic. The number in the name indicates the zoom range, either 8 times or 10 times, and the widest aperture, f1.4 for both cameras. These are really similar cameras in a lot of respects, and any user of one could easily pick up the other. This video is to talk about my experiences with both, show some sample footage, and hopefully inform you if you're looking to pick up either of these. All the footage, footage in this video is going to be Ektrachrome 100D. I do want to note that there are several similarly named cameras in the Canon lineup. The earlier Canon 814 Auto Zoom, not electronic, uses a PX625 Mercury battery for exposure, which I didn't want to deal with. The latter XL and XLS series have a wider shutter angle and sound capability, but they cost more and sound features are worse than useless since they just get in the way. Back to these cameras, starting with the zoom range, the 1014 goes ever so slightly wider, seven millimeters instead of seven and a half millimeters. It also goes further to 70 millimeters instead of 60 millimeters. Honestly, even though the zoom range is the biggest obvious difference between these two cameras, that's not why I would choose the 1014 over the 814. The extra 10 millimeter is nice for focusing, but it's probably really not all that necessary for actual filmmaking. In terms of usability, the 1014 has several advantages over the 814. The biggest one for me was the focusing aid. If you're familiar with film SLRs, many have both a micro prism and a split image. The 814 came with a micro prism, whereas the 1014 came with a split image. I much prefer the split image. Additionally, the 1014 also adds a shutter angle indication in the right side of the viewfinder, which is helpful for fading in and fading out, as well as just remembering where you have the shutter angle set. And the 1014 also has a little film transport light that just blinks as long as the film is running. I do want to make one note on the focusing. The diopter setting has a huge influence on how accurately you'll be able to focus. I definitely recommend having something at infinity to set the lens and the diopter at the same time, because if the diopter is set wrong, any time you focus, it will also be wrong. I won't get heavily into the optics, but this is unlike any SLR, or both of these are unlike any SLR, because in the SLR, you're looking at a real image which is projected on a ground glass, whereas the Super 8 viewfinder image is not on a screen, it's focused by the combination of the viewfinder lens and your eye. All that's to say, set your diopter very carefully with an in-focus subject at a known or a measured distance. Next, both the 814 and the 1014 have a fade function, but the 1014 has a really neat feature where it will rewind the film, enabling you to do either a crossfade or a simple overlap, the latter is useful for titles. I tried just writing a title on paper with a sharpie in my test roll. It worked all right, but I think putting the title in white text on an otherwise black computer or phone screen would work a little better. The fade settings are a little complicated and they take some getting used to on the 1014, so I'd suggest reading the manual a few times and trying it on some shots that you don't really care much about. I figured it out eventually, but occasionally the little blue and orange color indicators will be in the wrong position and it takes running the film for a little bit to actually reset them. Both cameras have a power zoom function, but the 1014 has two speed settings and a manual setting where the zoom motor is totally decoupled from the lens. The spec for the zoom time is five seconds on high and seven seconds on low speed, but I measured mine and my 1014 takes six seconds on low and nine seconds on high. I measured my 814 as well, it's right in between at seven and a half seconds. Manually zooming the 1014 when the motor is engaged feels worse than the 814, but it's much smoother than the 814 when you disengage the motor. I did have some issues accidentally bumping the zoom switch while I was shooting, so you might throw some gaff tape over it in whatever your most used setting is. All of this brings me to what I think is one of the biggest differences between these two cameras, the size and the weight. The 814 is already not the smallest Super 8 camera around, and the lens on the 1014 is significantly heavier than the 814. The 1014 also requires two more AA batteries, six instead of the four on the 814. 
I use a tripod mount shoulder strap on mine since neither of these cameras comes with strap lugs on the bottom and the included original strap is non-removable. The 1014 already weighs two kilograms without batteries, so holding this thing on a long shoot or for a long day is pretty tiring. One of the other reasons I have both of these cameras is that my 814 isn't in the best condition. The manual exposure doesn't work on this camera, but the auto exposure on both cameras is pretty good. I tested the 1014 in some challenging light conditions and it exposed my ectochrome perfectly, so I was really happy with that. On the 814, I have had mostly good exposures, but I've had issues on previous rules looking directly into lights, like car headlights. Here's a sample shot from the 814 from some Tri-X where the exposure changes significantly because of the headlights in the frame. I was a little surprised when I got this film back. I expected the lights to be a small portion of the frame and not affect the exposure so much. I didn't test the 1014 on a shot like this, but it's definitely something to watch out for when you're filming and maybe go into manual exposure if yours works. If you want my recommendation, I'd say you should get and use the camera in the best condition you can find, which I know is a little bit of a cop-out. If you don't mind the micro prism focusing and you can get over not having the crossfade and the title feature, the 814 will be a lot more pleasant to carry around. Both of these cameras shoot at 24 and 18 FPS, as well as having a single frame mode. So those are the most popular Super 8 speeds. They both have a slow-mo feature. The 814 supposedly does 40 frames per second, while the 1014 does 54 frames per second. I didn't see a huge difference in slow-mo speeds, but maybe if you're trying to do a lot of really fast action, you might want to look at the 1014. If you can find a 1014 in good condition though, I'd absolutely pick it up. It's a beautiful camera. Um, and the focusing is really nice, but you're just gonna be getting stronger arms.